excited. Hey guys, sorry I haven't been around much. I've been sick uh, for the past week or so. I've been working like 50 something hour weeks. Um, nice paychecks though. Um, let's see, new updates. I got the ingredients for my incubator. It's a 48 quart cooler. I'm gonna use a heat pad. I'm gonna try to use the heat pad. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna upgrade to heat tape. The only reason I got the heat pad, I had a nightmare last night, quote unquote nightmare, that uh, my snake started laying eggs without me having an incubator set up, so I panicked. Um, I didn't have to wait to get the heat pad. I had two $5 Petco coupons. Um, if I was incubating ball python eggs, I would want to go heat tape, but hog eggs incubate at like 78 to 80 degrees. I think that heat pad will be able to heat up that cooler to 80 degrees, no problem. I've got a VE200 kicking around <coughs> that I'm going to use for the thermostat. I built a mouse kill chamber. I built it small on purpose out of a tank there. It does work. You will never see me gas a rodent. I don't find that entertaining. I only do it to freeze them. Um, as food, you know, and I had to call one because it was just getting too old. Uh, I didn't put that in the food, I threw it outside for an animal to eat. But it was just mice when they start getting past their breeding prime, um, you notice that they start getting kind of creaky and thin, and uh, you know, you just know they're not going to breed anymore, but there's no real feeding value to them. So, a lot of times I just end up putting those down because if you don't, um, they'll die. If you don't catch them right away, they rot or they get eaten by the other mice. You don't want your mice eating other mice because I don't want them getting the idea that that's a thing that they're going to want to do, you know? So, and then I just changed these guys out. Look at how freaking pregnant that mouse is. Oh my god, I don't think I've ever seen a mouse that pregnant before. And I've been breeding mice from rats for a while. I got a bunch of females in here that are about to pop. So this tub dropped babies and uh, they ate them. I think, I think it was because I swapped males and I think the male just killed the babies that weren't his. But look how freaking fat she is. She's in the back there, she's huge. Um, the reason they do that is because they want their genes passed on and not the genes of the other male. So that's fine, they'll, they'll get, they'll, they'll, I got plenty in the freezer for right now. Um, they'll, you know, re-impregnate the female, and then he won't kill his own babies. Um, hopefully, it'll start warming up. I mean, they're doing fine out here. Nobody's died of cold or anything, but their breeding has slowed down, and I don't want that. I want their breeding to pick up. So, anyway, I'm going to go back to cleaning. I've still got two more tubs to clean. Then my buddy's going to come over and probably take that 10-gallon tank from me. He wants to get a tarantula, so I'm giving him the tank for his birthday. And I'm probably going to buy them the tarantula. It's like 20 bucks. And, uh, oh, and my albino female, one of them, uh, she had a couple documented locks with my albino male. She just shed. She looks swollen. I can actually feel what I think are either follicles or eggs growing in her. So that's another reason I want to get on this incubator. She's been spending a lot of time in her lay box. So I need to be prepared for when she drops. So this is going to be good, my first hog season. Um, I'm still waiting for my surprise mail to come in. Um, it's just been too cold. It's not a surprise, but it's a surprise to you guys. And I'm also trying to wait for a guy. I'm going to put a down pay, or I'm going to pay it off a uh, adult female. Um, it's a morph that will skyrocket me forward this season. So I'm just waiting for him to get back to me with shipping costs. I've already sent him a deposit. I just need to pay off the rest of it. And I've got the money. I'm just waiting on him to send me a shipping cost. So, But I'm not going to be getting them anytime soon because it's March in Connecticut. And it's a stupid, crazy low temps. Like we've got 20s and overnight teens all week. And then Friday it's going to be 40. So I don't, I don't even know. But probably another two or three weeks I'll have them in. Um, they're both ingredients that go into current projects that I'm working on. Anybody who knows me knows what, pro what my projects are. So, and that's it for now. I'm not going to buy any more snakes for a while. i got to pay off some cards, pay off some credit cards, pay off some debts. I want to start saving. Um, you know, Christine and I are getting serious about getting our own house and having kids. And I really want to do that. So... Hopefully this, this uh, hog season will help contribute to that. You know, if I can make enough money on hog noses, 
to put a down payment on a house, that would be amazing. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying it's possible, especially if certain factors fall into place uh, involving my snakes and breeding. So if I produce certain animals, I should be able to come up with enough to put a small down payment on a house. So, of course, we haven't even started looking. I mean, it's going to take a while to find one. But anyway, that's what's going on. Um, for this, oh, for the kill chamber, it's just paintball tank, controller, valve. Um, I didn't even attach PVC. I mean, I just punched a hole in it, put the valve in there, and it works perfect. Um, the mouse was dead in a couple seconds. I made it small on purpose because I'll be doing mostly large batches of fuzzies and a couple, you know, some adults. So I didn't want to go too overboard. Um, plus, when you have a small container, you don't want to waste it, so you don't need <coughs> CO2 it drops to the bottom um, of the tank, or of the container. So the mice are at the bottom, and then it forces the air out of that little hole. And, yeah, you don't need, like, a tall container. That's You're going to waste your CO2. So you're going to, and it's going to take longer for the rodents to die. I want it quick. I want it painless. I just want them to die and into the freezer they go. Speaking of which, I'm going to have to hook this freezer up once I start gassing mass quantities of mice. But we'll worry about that later. All right, so that's it. Out. All right, so I did some thinking. I thought about it. I think I'm going to use my old rack as a nursing rack. So when I notice I've got really, really pregnant females over here, I'll put them over here. Um, first off, they'll be farther away from the door, in case there's any breezes, which you can see there probably is. Second, it separates them from the males, so there's no chance of babies getting eaten unless it's by the mother. Then if I know the mothers are eating babies, I retire the mothers. So, AKA freezer. So that, I think that's a pretty good idea. I'm going to have to get a couple more water bottles. I've got an extra two kicking around right now, so I'm going to remove those big pregnant females and put them I should probably number the tubs too. Maybe. Or actually, that's a grow out tub, so there we go. Tub one, tub one, tub two, tub three, tub four, tub five. Um, that way I know which tub they go back into when I'm done with them. So, because I don't want to, I want to keep the males and females, you know, in their own colonies. I don't want to mix up the, well, I guess I could mix up the genetics a bit, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, I'm going to move those females over now.